Hi, everybody. Dennis Prager here, and it is the male female hour. And I don't like uh, I don't like deferring it. I like uh, having it on unless something really really important moves it. And I don't think something really really important. <laughs> That's a comment of uh, mine on the news is happening that we would defer this. So uh, on occasion, I have guests on the male female hour. As you know, folks, I think it's the most honest talk that at least uh, that I'm aware of uh, in American media with regard to men and women. I ha- my only agenda is that they understand each other better and get along better. I am not a man fan and I am not a woman fan. I am a good person fan. Uh, There are wonderful women, wonderful men, awful women, and awful men. And uh, it's too bad that the awfuls don't all marry each other. (laughs) On on too many occasions, the the good marry the awful. But all right, I don't want to get too dark. On occasion, I have a guest, and this is one of those occasions. And I I wish you could uh, see him. Because you wouldn't expect, looking at him, that he would write a book about uh, intimacy in marriage. Good, good-looking, photogenic, white-bearded, Orthodox Jew, Manus Friedman. He's a very uh... <laughs> look at that. You got an ovation already. You didn't even say anything. The trick is to get an ovation at the end of the hour. That's the trick. <laughs> Rabbi Manus Friedman is the a Chabad rabbi. He is the dean of the Base Hana Institute of Jewish Studies, which is in Minnesota, correct? Yes. That's in, uh, which is, he, that's where he lives, obviously. And he, uh, he has a, a book titled The Joy of Intimacy, A Soulful Guide to Keeping the Spark Alive. So the very subtitle, let's talk about that, and then we'll get into your theories uh, on on how to keep that spark alive. The the subtitle, A Soulful Guide to Keeping the Spark Alive, implies that keeping the spark alive is a problem. It is a problem. It's a big problem. Go ahead. Everybody knows about it. I think there's a crisis that um, even in happily married couples, there's, there's a feeling that there's no real intimacy. There's no real bonding. And that's why the, my, my second book, it's because I noticed in marriage counseling that people are unhappy in, in happy marriages. And if you track it down, it's because even in a successful happy marriage, people feel alone in the world. And aloneness, I think, has become the issue of today. Well, uh, you, you know, in, in light of that, uh, that is that is so entirely correct. Do you know that in the United Kingdom they have a minister of loneliness? It's a government. Very sad guy. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> might be. I hope he's not lonely. But right. but it, it it's a, it shows you how uh, how it's a sort of a pandemic. That's an interesting though argument. E- how could there be a happy, how could the marriage be happy if they're each lonely? They, they really don't have any complaints against each other. It's a very workable relationship. They don't want out. Oh, okay. So but there's something really fundamental missing. And what is the fundamental missing? Intimacy. What does intimacy mean? Ah. We know, we know what pornography means, right? Pornography means objectifying, using people as an object. But what is the opposite of that? What is non-objectifying? What does that feel like? And objectifying is not a, always as crass as uh, literal pornography. If I want to marry you for your money, that's objectifying. If I love you for your money, that's objectifying. It's worse, but we'll we'll, we'll get to that in a second. If I love you for love, is that not objectifying? I just want your love. I don't want you. So give me your love and keep your opinion to yourself. (laughs) I I didn't marry you for your opinion. 
So the end result is, I like many things about you, I just don't know why I need you. Huh. And that leaves us separate. We didn't bond. So that's from the beginning of the marriage. This is, it's sort of like the original sin. Yeah, we're not marrying correctly. It's not that we're getting old and, and the marriage fades. It's a fundamental mistake. We're marrying for something. Uh, the sages say, a love dependent on something is not going to last. So the opposite of loving you for something that I get from you is I love you just for you? And what is that? Well, yeah, what, I ask people, right. you know, if take everything away, what's left? If it's not looks and it's not money and it's not your sense of humor and it's not your love, well, what's left? Well, I would, I actually would ask that question. What is left? I think the best definition is the fact that you're not me. You're my other. You're not a clone of me. And the fact that you're not me, that's what attracts me. That's what I'm married to. The rest is just commentary. Well, is, is anybody available for that role? I mean, then why not just pick, if you're a man, just pick any woman? You're not me. If, if it's not your sense of humor and not your intelligence and not your looks, uh, uh, then, then marry anybody. Ideally. <laughs> um, yeah, ideally, that would be true. But the things about you might put me off from you. So I'm not marrying the things about you, but I don't want them to get in the way. Mm -hmm. So it's a process of elimination. I want to find somebody who I can connect to, but not with stuff getting in the way. So if I don't like your looks, that's a problem. If your personality turns me off, it's not going to let me connect to you. But the only way to solve the aloneness problem is if we really connect to each other. Connecting to a common interest does not bond us. It keeps us separate. And you feel alone in the world. And I love that line from the Piano Man, Billy Joel. Yeah, and what's the line? They're sharing a drink they call loneliness, but it's better than drinking alone. Hmm. So loneliness is a problem. Aloneness is a killer. That's, that's worse than loneliness. You can't even share it. The book is The Joy of Intimacy. And if you have uh, comments, questions, obviously, call in. Especially call in, though, if you are alone in your marriage. That's what the rabbi is saying is, is pretty common. Manus Friedman is my guest. 1-8 Prager is the number. Back in a moment. The Dennis Prager Show. Live from the Relief Factor Pain-Free Studio. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers. It's conversation. It's really relaxed. It's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us. Take a look. Click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best. And join us for some enjoyable conversation.